everybody. Welcome to the People, Purpose, and Profits Business Coaching Podcast. My name is Brian Buck, and my wonderful co-host is... And I'm Kat. And we are so excited to have Chris O'Byrne join our, our podcast today. Uh, Chris, can you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about what you do, and then we're going to get right into the, the nitty gritty. You got it. So, yep, I'm Chris O'Byrne, and I escaped Minnesota to come live in southern Arizona, I own two companies. One is called Jet Launch, where we provide publishing services for authors and publishers. And then the other is Conversion Publishing, where we help business owners actually write the books. Uh, and we do that process for them. And I got to say, I'm, I'm super honored to be on this show today and just excited to be able to share something that might be valuable to your, uh, to your listeners. Yeah, wonderful. You know, one question I talked with some entrepreneurs about this and there's an interesting um, school of thought and I'm curious what you think is why two companies versus one umbrella with two services what led you to want to make two of them uh, because this one be, is a partnership so it started mm -hmm. out as a partnership and we do like the main writing and whatnot piece together. And then when it's ready for like, say the editing and design and the rest of the process, then the book goes to my other company. So one company is hiring the other company to do the work, but because of that partnership, it just made sense for us to keep them separate. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. One of my dream uh, interviews is Pearl Jam. And one of the questions I want to ask Pearl Jam is, how do you know what's the band versus solo acts? But I think you've got a really good way of talking about, hey, this is over here and it makes sense. But it, my part, the partner doesn't make sense in this arena. That's that's whole another thing. So that's exactly. a really good, really good distinction. Um, so I always like to start our interviews with, we are about the balance of people, purpose and profits. In your business, and uh, do you have a balance of all three, or do you, is maybe one more important in the season of your business as well? Yeah, so I think I went through a process that probably a lot of entrepreneurs go through as well, and that is I started with profits because I wanted to have, make a living, and I didn't want to you know, be in the cubicle anymore. Although, you know, I was a teacher, so it was a big cubicle with a lot of kids. But, you know, starting out with profits was the main thing. And I wanted to make a living and I wanted to make a living doing my own thing. And so that was the initial focus. And I'm not saying that's the right way, but that is, the you know, the way I started. And then from profits, I moved to people because once I had enough and I knew that I was going to have enough to live on, then I started focusing on people. So, you know, who are the people that I could serve best? How could I serve them even better? How could I find more people like that? Those things are, uh, you know, they, I would recommend today that that comes before the profits, but I understand how it works and how people go through that. And then the third step was actually the last one was purpose. And it's kind of like uh, Maslow's hierarchy. Mm. So, you know, I started out with profits being the base, and then I added people on top of that while still paying attention to profits. And then now, you know, they're, they're very important to me. People are still way more important. I pay attention to profits, but I don't focus on it because when I'm paying attention to purpose and then people, then it all falls together works together the right way and i've i'm glad that i'm there now but i would if i were to be mentoring somebody to start their business i would say okay let's talk about your purpose first and then who is, are the people that you can best serve and then let's look at what are going to bring the profits in so i would flip that you know that triangle hierarchy so that purpose is at the bottom you know what I'm really, really love. Um, I'm glad that you actually 
said it that way and that you did it that way because a lot of people are actually writing themselves off and are causing a lot of strain on themselves because they are driven by profits. And you know what? We do have to meet our basic needs first and having a roof over your head and, um, you know, providing for your family is a need. So it's okay for that. And I, like I said, I'm really happy that you said that and then you from your experience now you see how everything else just is much more seamlessly if you go from prop from purpose to people and then profits yeah exactly you know i always like to coach it's about relationships and results and i think it's so important because if you are just profits you're not going to have profits for very long because you burn the relationships or the people aspect. But then the flip side is if you spend so much time in the relationships and the people and the purpose, you also have to think about the sustainability of your business as well. Without the profits, it's a hobby. And how long can you sustain that? So, Right. And, and if you're, again, and I did this, if you're focusing on people and you're not putting that in the context of purpose, then you tend to be a little all over the place. You don't have a real strong focus and people don't feel that, that certainty, that confidence coming from you because there is this, well, I'm not really sure what my purpose is. And if, if it's there and if it's guiding things, then your message, uh, even when you're just talking with someone new seems to always come through. Mm. And I would love if you could maybe provide an example so that it's easier for people to understand uh, what exactly it is that you mean by that. Yeah, so my purpose is to help people to be heard because I now know, having been in this business for 12 years, that everybody has a message that needs to be shared with the world. And most people don't think they do but with just a little bit of digging a couple questions, all of a sudden it starts to become clear to them. And so when I have that purpose of everybody has a message and then I get on the phone or Zoom to talk to somebody, then that's what we start talking about. We start talking about what is your message instead of what book do you want to write, for example. Mm. So if I start with the message for them, then they're, they get, well, they get excited. It's something that really resonates with them. And then it becomes much more clear what that book should be, mm. who it should be for, and so on. I love that. You, you, know, you, you made me think of something, if I could put you on the spot. Um, <laughs> you said your purpose is for people to be heard. That's your personal purpose. And do each of your two businesses have the same purposes or do they have different purposes and how does that tie to your personal purpose? So just kind of curious about that congruency. Uh, yes. Well, for the two businesses, they definitely have the same. Mm -hmm. One of them is uh, much more hands-on actually digging those things out and then helping put it all together for them. And we, I mean, we always use any materials they've already produced, et cetera, mm -hmm. but it still all comes down to, to that piece of it. So the it's, it is definitely my purpose in relation to my business. So I also have like several partnerships, but every single one of them is also about helping people get their message heard. So it's not just, I mean, it's nice because they all kind of form the same, um, you know, they're all sort of about the same business. I'm not like talking to people about their message and books. And then over here, I'm selling timeshares on jet planes. Yeah. It's, you know, everything is sort of related, but it because it falls under that purpose, it really just all makes sense and flows together. What does that mean for you? The fact that your business is your purpose, your personal purpose. What has what that meant for you as a, an individual in your life? I think that we all have multiple identities. 
Hmm. We have multiple roles, multiple identities, and everybody knows that. Where, you know, I'm, for example, I'm a, I'm a husband, I'm hmm. a, a parent, I'm a grandparent, I'm a business owner. So, uh, my business purpose is for people to be heard, to get their message out. But my personal purpose, uh, as far as my family goes, well, in a sense, yeah, it is hmm. part of it. Especially as I'm raising. You know, I, I have uh, four children who are grown and in their 30s, and I have one child who is four years old. And so I'm now in this wonderful position of having all this experience mm -hmm. and I'll say wisdom compared mm -hmm. to where I was when I was raising the first batch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and that is a big part of, the, of raising her. I am. Actually, until this moment, I actually didn't, I never realized that my business purpose was actually crossing into my personal purpose because we are always letting her be heard. And mm. that's one of the driving factors behind how we're raising her. Because I was raised, you know, shut your mouth, don't talk, go to your room, be quiet, don't want to hear you. And so I've had to rewire myself to be, tell me what you're feeling, tell me what you want, let's work on this together. Let's figure something out. And it has made a huge difference mm. in my personal life as well. Wow. It really does. I, I agree with that. And I'm really curious for someone who maybe, uh, because we are multifaceted, um, if they have several messages, how do you help someone maybe narrow it down to one? That is wonderful. So if we're going to look for just one message, well, the first thing I would look at is, can any of those be combined or put under the umbrella of maybe what's a deeper purpose that they don't even realize is guiding that? And because that's exactly what I, I did with my own business is eventually realized how many of these other little things that was really part of this bigger message. So that would be the first step. And then if there are, let's say they have four different messages, well, one, what's the purpose of the book? Is it to generate leads? Is it to build your authority? Is it to leave a legacy? You know, and mm -hmm. then when the purpose of their book is discovered, then it becomes a lot more clear what that message should be in the book and what they should be focusing on first. They And we do have people that come back for second, third, fourth books. But that first book, it's always the most important. It's their firstborn. Mm. And so... We want to make sure we really get it right. Beautiful. In that situation, do you guide or or maybe not guide or kind of what comes out of those conversations? Does it come down to maybe what's the most important message to them? They're most passionate or is it often more about maybe what they're more of an expert in? Yeah, you know, like, because like, that could be the easier thing than maybe that deeper thing. I, I, and maybe it's a mix with the people yeah. you've helped, but curious about that. Yeah. And I'd say we get both. We get the people who are, they, they're not really as concerned about getting leads or building their business with their book. They've, they've got a, a message, a passion. They've got to get it out. And it doesn't even matter if they're not going to sell that many. And mm -hmm. because that's one of the things we look at, what's the sellability of your book, in, you know, the, in the market. And, but then we have the other people who are, this is a book for me to generate leads. I'm going to sell it from stage. I'm going to give it to people. I'm going to have a free plus shipping funnel. It's all about getting leads. Now, what we like to do is blend those as much as possible because this book that's just generating leads, eh, it, it'll do the job, but there's people read it and they're not like, there's no passion there. Mm -hmm. It's not a book they come back to. It may not even be a book they recommend to people unless they know somebody who has that same exact specific problem. But then you got the passion part that may not be selling or guiding people into their business. Blend those two together and you've got something that's not only really strong, but it's also very powerful and effective for what they want that book to do for other people and for themselves. You just made me realize why people need someone like you and they want to write a book. <laughs> I like, you know, 
Well, writing and editing is hard enough, but then to be really thinking about where does this fit in the scheme of things and then having that decision and then knowing how to do it, that's a lot of work. <laughs> Thank you for doing what you do. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's just a little bit of guidance, a little bit of, it's like talking to a counselor, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It helps. It takes the struggle out, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's, they don't realize how blocked they are from the stress of not knowing. They just don't even, you know, consciously realize it. Once that stress is gone, all of a sudden the creative blocks disappear as well. Mm. What has been one of the funnest book projects or maybe not the funnest or most rewarding book projects for you? Well, the, the most current one is actually a book that I'm writing with my business partner in conversion mm -hmm. publishing. Mm -hmm. So we created this whole process and we have all these, you know, pieces and things and the methods and a framework. And then we're like, we don't have a book ourselves. And so <laughs> let's do a book. I know maybe a little backwards, but like, let's do a book that we just follow this process exactly like we're describing because we're pulling that process from you know we were uh you know got some mentorship from michael haig who you know wrote the book storytelling and does a lot of works with will smith and a whole bunch of a-list actors um so there's a lot of that story and a lot of it, and a lot of it is just common sense a lot of it is taking from the world of fiction fiction, blending it with nonfiction so that it's actually engaging, exciting. I mean, none, none of the pieces that we did are, are novel. It's the way we put it together, present it and use it. So we thought, man, we need to do this process for our own book. So we're coming out with a book. Uh, we're probably halfway done with it. It's called Hook, Line and Book. And it <laughs> is about getting people into your business, but doing it with story. Uh, a lot of it is building in the know, like, and trust throughout the process so that that's happening naturally in the book. And so we're, you know, we're partnering together. There's a lot of back and forth. We're seeing this thing grow. And even though it's exciting to help other people, there's another level there when it's your book and mm -hmm. it's your project. And then when you're using your method on top of that. So that has been super rewarding and will continue to be because we're not even done yet. And then there's that whole process of marketing, launching, and the excitement of doing that and, and getting it out there. So that's currently the biggest one. The one before that, I'd say, was uh, we just finished up a couple months ago doing a book and a launch with Joe Vitale. And that was like spectacular because he's one of those people who for many years I've you know, read his stuff and I've looked up to what he does and he's a big name, which is really coincidental because he's just such a nice, friendly mm -hmm. guy on top of it. So mm -hmm. those are, those are a couple. Yeah. You make me think of something. <clears throat> what was it like, or what is it like to take your own framework advice it, it, You're writing your book because I remember when I went from consulting on a certain thing in like the Toyota way and then became a manager, I had to take my own consulting advice, which wasn't as easy as I thought. So I learned so much by trying to act as what I taught. So just curious if there's anything like Eureka moments you had writing the book in the process that you teach and use. Absolutely. And when you said that, I looked over to my bookshelf because I have a book called The Toyota Way for mm. Service Businesses. Okay. And, uh, and so a, another book that I and concept that I really like is Anti-Fragile. Mm. And uh, Nassim Tlaib wrote the book Anti-Fragile. But I have realized that our systems are anti-fragile in just the way we put them together, because every time something comes along that we need to change, you know, like the system breaks down and we mess up somewhere, mm -hmm. and then what happens is the system doesn't break. The system gets built even stronger and gets improved. Mm -hmm. So everything that comes along. And so that's what's happened here is we're going through this and we're like, oh, wait a second. 
we can do even better on this piece and we can change this part of the framework. And what if we did, you know, one of the things we did is we now teach and do that we do the introduction last because mm. it, and it just totally made sense once we did it because, you know, we've got our stories, we've got our teaching. That's kind of easy to conceptualize and put together. And then what do you do with that? And then once that's done, then you're like, okay, now how do I present that? How do I introduce that? And then the introduction becomes like super powerful because of just because of that. And that happened because of what we discovered as we went through our own framework together. Wow. That's oh, such yeah. a good book too. <laughs> I love that. I have book. to read it, but yeah, no, I, I definitely can see the power of what you just said because that mm -hmm. gives it not only clarity, but it, it's almost like you, it's looking backwards, right? When you go through a journey, you usually don't know like where you're at, you kind of feel, you know, iffy about it, so to speak, because you're still learning. But as you look back and you see all the lessons, it's much more powerful in, in the perspective from the point that you're at. You know? Absolutely. So I really love that. And I want to ask you, what do you find is the most important thing for an author? Um, is it creativity? Is it authenticity? What is the one thing? Or is it mm -hmm. I would now say authenticity. Um, I might have said expertise in the past, but what I have learned, especially just in the last few months, is that authenticity, people connect with authenticity. They, and even when they don't realize it. As an example, going back to the previous election, we had Hillary on one side and we had Donald Trump on the other. And Donald Trump was, well, let's just say he was Donald Trump, but he was authentic. And even though not a lot of, maybe not a lot of people resonated with his authentic or with his message the fact that he was authentic about it and i had one thing that i heard during that time was a lot of people were like they just they felt like they couldn't quite trust hillary and these are the people that were on the fence they're like well we don't know for sure about donald trump but he's authentic and so then they ended up voting for him and i have found then and i've watched that where people resonate with somebody who is authentic and i've learned recently that one of the genes that we have is called the alpha is something alpha introduction gene but it's something where we resonate and uh tend to follow and believe in people who come across uh, you know the alphas but they they come across as authentic and they come across as confident and so when an author can take that and put that into their message and often it happens naturally because if they are truly authentic, that comes through in everything they do. It comes through in their messaging and their, how they talk and how they write and, and that's going to come through in their book naturally as well. But that's, I think more than just about any other factor is what makes people not only read the book, but trust the message that's mm -hmm. behind it. And then, uh, take action in some form, whether it's just improving their lives, connecting with the author, or wherever that lands. Oh, and I'm so happy you you said that because I think there's a lot of pressure on people to be creative and stand out. And I don't really think that people understand that your authenticity is really what makes you stand out. It really is. And creativity especially with business authors, tends to become a crutch. Mm -hmm. They want to be creative. They want to come up with this, for example, some cool title to their book, a cool chapter titles to their book. And it's like, yeah, isn't this clever? But it doesn't really help or serve the author or the reader at the least. Mm -hmm. And Or they want to be creative in how they put the book together, not realizing that if they just looked at all the successful books, they pretty much all follow a similar pattern or a similar framework in how they're put together versus, you know, something where, oh, I have this great creative idea and I'm going to do this and isn't it going to be cool, but then it ends up not helping people. And mm. 
It, yeah. And how important do you believe that it is to stay within a certain framework? And um, the reason I'm asking this question, because there is a book written by, I, I forgot his name. <laughs> oh my God. And it's called, I hope I messed this up. And he does not follow the framework at all. And I thought it was genius because he was challenging the way we read and it made it interesting and made it captivating and kept me going where maybe some, somewhere else. So where is the balance between following conventional and then becoming too boring to, you know, stay engaged with, with the book? Right. And the only time that the book really becomes boring is when the author is not connecting with the reader. So if the reader, if, if the author, so they're, they're, you know, we teach something called the 3E method. And the first two have nothing to do with the expertise, the actual teaching or education. You know, the first one is, you know, building the, the no part. And that's where you're, you're letting the reader know that you understand what their problem is. You're just connecting by stating their problem, stating it better than they could even. Um, and then, so that shows that you know them. The second part is the like, and that's the story part. And that's where uh, you're telling your story or you're telling other people's stories. You're giving even case studies and examples and anecdotes. That's all part of the story. And that kind of gets woven throughout. But then you also pay attention to the overall story arc uh, because you're going to be taking people through that process. Every successful, almost every successful fiction book or movie follows that same process as well. So it's, there are a few movies out there that are like super creative and most people end up not watching them. They're, they're, they'll admit that, yes, this is very creative. And, uh, you know, they were, you know, into the idea of it, but then you look at, okay, well, what's more popular? For example, the law and order TV shows, extremely formulaic, but so is the matrix star Wars, you know, all the Harry Potter books and movies, they all follow that pattern. And so we tend to relax and find comfort in, in following that framework when we're reading the book, which is why it's important to follow a framework when you're writing the book in most cases. So if you're trying to prove a point and educate people and say, yes, there are alternate ways to read a book or to write a book, there are alternate ways to experience content, Absolutely. That education is great. But what do the majority of people need in that moment? And what are they going to connect with? And if you're trying to connect with your market and provide something that's going to help them, you're not going to achieve that if you're being like super creative and out of the box and doing something that's totally unusual. Um, you know, because we can think of weird movies out there. Um what was that one with Jim Carrey? I can't remember now, but it was really out there. And it was cool. I loved the movie. But at the same time, it was, you know, a little bit unsettling. It made me think, which are good things, because that was the purpose. But what is your purpose in writing the book? Your purpose yeah. usually is to connect with your audience so that you can build your authority, build your business, get leads, leave a legacy, and so that's my long-winded answer. <laughs> well, and it's, it's very thorough. And I really do agree with the fact that um, following a pattern, it's really, really powerful. And it helps us um, not exhaust a lot of energy in that because that can, you know, derail a lot of people from getting things done. Yes. Yep. Well, <clears throat> well I also think it's so important with creativity is it's not creative for creative sake. And it's to have a purpose. And, you know, one of the things I share a lot is I don't care if you read 100 books a year, if you don't have 100 new habits or perspectives that you're using. So just knowing without doing is a problem. And I would say maybe from an author, especially working with you, is to be heard. So if the creativity gets in the way of them being heard. Exactly. That's the way you measure whether or not you're off the rails or not. 
Because, yeah, it's yes. the ultimate purpose is, you know, the author is your client, but then they have to be thinking about who it's for. And, yeah, that's great. Then you just prove there why it's so important to see it through the lens of, you know, what's the purpose of this and knowing the purpose. Yes, it ties it, ties it all together. Yeah. Well, I know I would want to hear more from you, but we're out of time. This has been such an awesome time talking with you, Chris. Uh, I know our audience will also want to hear more from you. So how can they hear from you? Where, where, where do they find you? Do you have anything coming out that you want to share with people so they can be on the lookout? Absolutely. So if anybody just has a question or wants some advice or wants to get on the list to hear like to be the first to hear when that book actually comes out, then just email me at chris at jetlaunch.net. <laughs> That'll be perfect right there. But they can go to jetlaunch.net to learn about like the, the publishing design side of things, or they can also go to conversionpublishing.com to find out more about the, you know that writing process. And over time, we'll start adding more resources in there as well. So the, that'd be the best way to do it. I'm excited. I'm really excited for the book. And I, I, I know I want to be on the list. <laughs> yes, exactly. But I think we, when you. it comes out, we have another reason to have part two of this interview. Can I would we... love to come back. Yeah, that's awesome. And we want our audience to come back as well. So feel free to follow us on YouTube or on your podcatcher of choice. We also have a Facebook group where we post every episode every week. And you can interact with Kat and I or other audience members. And this is a good opportunity for people to talk about storytelling or, or wanting to write a book or how are they being heard. Uh, so let's, let's have a great discussion in that group. So thank you, everyone. We will see you next time. 